Hello again everybody and today I want to talk about something I have spoken about briefly in my previous videos on the ancient cave cities of Truffet Hill and Esky Cormain and that is these stone tracks. These stone tracks are found in both locations and in both cases mainstream historians claim they were created by the repeated wear from merchant and nobleman cart tracks. I think it's fairly obvious if, if you take a decent look and apply a wee bit of common sense that this is not the case. This is made all the more apparent by the fact that these are not the only place that these tracks are found and they are found in almost an identical form on every continent on this map. This is Truffet Kale that we're looking at here and I think what is apparent when you look at this photo is the the level, the depth that these tracks run at is not consistent. It changes over the course of the, the length of this track. Now that would only be possible if the material that this track was formed in was soft because nobody's going to carve a track at inconsistent depths and these carts that were supposedly running over this hard limestone to create these tracks would have worn it in a, a, an equal depth and would not have worn it at inconsistent wobbly depths such as seen here. Now what I am suggesting is that the flood that we have all heard about in every single culture on every single continent was a real event. Whether the middle of an ancient glacier or some other catastrophic action led to a massive flood which raised the sea levels significantly. In some cases, the sea levels rose by as much as 200 metres. This is still SK Conrain that we are looking at here, and you can see the tracks are fairly weathered in this case. So this sea level rising explains the vast number of prehistoric sites the world over, and hundreds of other oddities that we still find hidden under the sea. The same floods killed and displaced a large number of people, forcing it to move further inland from the coastlines and recreate and rebuild the civilizations and technologies that were lost. The scale of this flood was so great that it washed away many of the mountains that uh, existed on the earth prior to this cataclysm. That's why if you look at some of these ancient maps, there is mountains marked in the, the middle of Europe, vast mountain ranges marked in the middle of Europe, which do not exist to this day, despite the maps themselves being extremely accurate. The very same flood became a mud flow. As with any vast amount of flooding, the, the water itself picks up debris, picks up flood uh, mud and silt, and this would have created a mud flow once the, the flood in itself had subsided. Now this mud flow became the basis for the blocks used in rebuilding these civilizations as well as the habitat for the people that had been, been displaced by the flood. And this explains why these tracks are carved into these rocks, because the rocks themselves were soft. They were not rocks at the time that this was created. The cave dwellings that we see in these cave cities the world over were also not solidified rock, they were carved out of soft clay material which was rapidly hardening. As this mud flow hardened, it turned into what we call stone and rock. It turned into what we call limestone. And in a couple of these photos we will see that this, when this rock splits and when it cracks there is still a fairly good bit of evidence that what lies inside is soft clay material. But these respective civilizations not only dug and carved dwellings into the mud flow itself, but quarried it. And this is what they used to turn into these vast blocks that we see and have little explanation for. It's also the reason why in places such as Peru, these walls were created and people are always asking how did they soften the rocks. The rocks were soft prior to them being, being uh, put in place. They, they were soft, they, they were cut into the shapes that were needed and moulded into the necessary shapes and then they were hardened under the sun. As you can see here when we when we look at these images it is fairly obvious that this, this uh, material was soft when these tracks were created and it's also fairly obvious or, or, or fairly easy to draw the conclusion from our modern perspective that these look very much like the same tracks that are left with off-road vehicles and work vehicles in soft muddy soil. Now this is still Esky Carmine and as you can see, the, the tracks are, are fairly well defined in some places, and in some places they are extremely weathered. But what we don't see is the chipping from horse hooves or any other form of wear. Just what mainstream historians tell us was the, the tracks, the carts, running over the exact same place consistently time after time after time again. 
This would also imply some form of standardisation in the carts themselves, which seems hard to believe at the time. Now, as in this photo we can see a crack that has uh, cut across these tracks. The tracks themselves intersect these cracks, and therefore they must have been created prior to the tracks themselves forming. Now, these, track, uh, these cracks have been dated in the millions of years. In this case, I think this crack itself has been dated back as far as 4 million years. Now, what becomes obvious when we look at these uh, cave cities, uh, such as Eski Kermain and Chufit Kale, if we if we look at it from the perspective of this this uh, not being hard rock but being a soft clay like material which was hardening rapidly, we can see these tool marks become a, a lot more uh, easy to explain. If this was carved rock, then these lines would not be so long and would not be so parallel and perfectly straight. Just as the buildings themselves and the domiciles, the the cutouts in these rocks would not be quite as smooth. They were not carved into a hard rock, but they were dug out and carved in a soft clay like material. Now like I said, Russia is not the only continent that these tracks are found. They are found in almost every single continent on this earth. Millions of mi uh, thousands, hundreds of miles away from, uh, away from Russia. And I think if you, if we're looking at this, imagining that these rocks were soft, uh, then these, these uh, structures become a lot more easy to explain. This is still Eski Kermain that we are looking at, and you can see this entire uh, the area where these tracks lie has been carved out. This this whole area has been the rock has been displaced. Now, what is interesting is that these are often found at the the say ancient temples or ancient quarries, ancient sites leading to and from. This is a place that I've spoken about in another video as well. This is Syracuse in Italy, what mainstream historians call an ancient quarry. Again, it becomes pretty apparent what the the the, the result of these these uh, tracks were. These were the tracks that removed the quarried material, so they were creating these these dwellings to live in. Whilst they quarried the the mud flow itself, the mud flow they could create blocks of any shape, any size, and they carried them along the soft clay, the soft mud flow, and as a result of the heavy the the weight of the blocks, uh, the vehicles that they were carrying them in sunk into the dirt, just as diggers and off road vehicles do today. And you can see here it becomes fairly obvious when you look at the, the, the scale of this quarry and, and angles that we see, the, the, the perfectly straight angles that we see here and the smoothness of these objects that uh, this was the case. In fact, so this is Bakagum in Belgium, you can see the, the tracks themselves here are pretty, pretty well worn, but the cracking, the, the, the wearing that we see is also consistent with a hardening, a drying of clay. As the clay hardens and dries, it shrinks, and that creates these cracks. This is back Chisarai again, just outside the Chufit Kale. But what I liked about these photos is you can clearly see evidence of the quarrying. These rocks here have been cut. And if we were to imagine for a second that these people, again, how did they quarry to such a great scale? It was because it was a lot easier back then, because this material was soft. The very same mud flow that displaced them and killed a lot of the people was the same mud flow that they used to create civilization back from scratch. And you can see here the tracks go to quite a quite a depth, and that's because the the ground itself was not cons a consistent hardness. Some areas were harder than other areas. Some areas were drying quicker than others. Some areas had been slightly more moist. And I believe in some cases there are well, well I'll show you channels that had been cut to keep this clay itself moist, whilst it was being turned into blocks and quarried. But you can see here this this entire area has been quarried out, cut. And you can see how it's been removed in sections. But there are the tracks again, which look nothing like what we would imagine cart tracks to do in hard limestone. <coughs> like I said, we've not only found them in Russia and so far Belgium, but this is Castella de Meca in Spain. And the th first thing we notice is what looks like a, a, a flowy material, a flow of mud with these stairs carved into them. These stairs would not have been carved into this mud flow, they would have been extremely easy to create with just the use of any flat hard material, such as a log or a plank. If this is soft clay like mud, which is rapidly hardening under the hot sun, then all you need to do is press a plank along it in these sections to create stairs up. 
and that's exactly what they've done. Like I said, they are often found in the area of quarries or temples, and that's because they were either removing the blocks from the quarry or taking them to the temple that they were creating with these blocks. And you can see here, this entire area itself has been quarried and carved. The same area, Castella de Maker. And in the background we can see the evidence of even more quarrying. I think the scale of quarrying that went on in ancient times was just absolutely vast. Castella de Maker again, and only we do we see evidence of the, the, the blocks that they were creating, or fragments, remains of the blocks that they were creating in these quarries, but the same vast tracks that are leading away from it. Now, you would have to be a fool to believe for a second that these were created by repeated wear from wooden wagon wheels. Get Stella de Maker again, and you can see the depth of these tracks is absolutely vast. For any mainstream historian to have the brass neck to believe, to, to, to have us believe for a second that these were created by just the same merchants going over the same area over and over again on hard limestone is, is not believable in the slightest. And just to give you a rough idea, you can see how smooth some of these tracks are and how they diverge because not all the blocks would be going to the same area and not all the work is, is, is being carried out in the same area. You can see the depth of these tracks here, in some cases reaches up to a half a metre. And again, fairly obvious that this is the result of nothing more than a vehicle travelling over soft, either mud or clay. As you can see, we have the main track and then a side channel at either end where the vehicles have, or other vehicles have diverged. But you can also see the depth of this material is, is significant. What I will show you in another photo is you can actually see the pressing out of material as, as the, the weight has bore down on this, this soft, soft mud. You can just about make it out there. But again, this is in Spain now, not Russia. Although it looks exactly like the tracks that we've seen in the cave cities in Russia. Good photo of this one because not only do we get the tracks, but we also get a wee hint of the blocks that they were creating in these ancient quarries. And just look at that perfect angle on these, these, these blocks. We also find this in the same area. A big giant pit carved straight out of rock. Because it wasn't carved out of rock, it was carved out of a soft material. It was dug out of a soft material in order to create blocks. The people at the time, although they had been the victim of a massive catastrophe, were, were no as dumb as we, we would like to imagine. They seized the opportunity fairly well and used the, the exact same mud flow that had displaced and killed a lot of them to, to rebuild civilization. Still in Spain, and you can see here this was very obviously no, no uh, cart tracks. Especially no cart tracks wearing over hard limestone. The the material that you're seeing here was once upon a time mud, and I, I believe that these uh, pockets that you see are nothing more than air pockets. You you know yourself that no the air gets pressed out of the mud straight away, and as it hardens, just like a poor mix of cement, it would trap these air bubbles. Now this is Italy. And although this is Italy, it looks almost identical to what we have seen in Russia and Spain and Belgium. And we also have evidence here of the same quarrying. You can see that that is very clearly a block. And you can see how along here is the, the main track and as the vehicle that is dragging or mo moving through this soft material, it has scored the edges slightly. Again, scoring the edges would only be possible if it was moving through a soft material. Just like in Russia, the depth in these uh, tracks is not consistent in the slightest, as some areas would have hardened quicker than others. You can see again, this area has been quarried. The sides here are perfectly flat and smooth, at either end with the tracks in the middle. Now this, I believe, is reminiscent of a footpath. A footpath that had been, or perhaps not an official or specific footpath, but the area in which people walked next to the, the, the main roadways, removing the, the quarried material. And you can almost tell in these photos how the 
the mud was soft and it has pressed this extra material out at either side. That's how you have this raised hump in the middle. And again we see these same air pockets that were, were trapped in the mud. If they weren't creating blocks then I do not know what this structure is on the side. It is fairly obvious, especially at this lower section, that these are these are blocks. That is n nearly a perfect right angle, with perfectly smooth edges, right next to these tracks. This is still Servetteri in Italy, and the exact same site that we've seen in Russia, with these smooth quarry do uh, side sections, and the tracks in the middle. And in some cases, they in Italy they actually they actually reach a decent length. There's there's some that reach in the hundreds of meters. But like I was saying, not only did they create tracks, just as in Russia they created these dwellings. Some of them were for worship, some of them were for living, some of them were storehouses. And another factor that you would have to take into account is that not all the the water that they had, some of the water would have been tarnished as a result of this flood whether by dead bodies or debris or uh, other other uh, pollutants so they would have also had to create areas in which to harvest rainwater but it becomes fairly obvious the, 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 the true history of these areas when you see the, the blocks at the side these blocks were not quarried out of stone or hard stone they were quarried out of the same material that these tracks were formed in a soft clay like mud material which dried rapidly And you can see the depth of these tracks here. If you can imagine sticking a wagon wheel in there and expecting it to make that bend whilst at that depth, it would it would choke the wheel up fairly quickly. Now we are reaching Malta. Now Mal Malta sits in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, about a hundred miles south of Sicily. It's fairly well known for its megalithic temples, such as the I think it's the Hippogeum, which you're not allowed to take photos in, by the way. But less people know the fact that the prehistoric temples in Malta are actually older than the e Egyptian pyramids and Malta itself is home to the oldest buildings in the entirety of Europe and we also see these tracks, these tracks in Malta lead to and from these ancient temples and in some cases around them this area is known as Clapham Junction it's known as Clapham Junction because it's so reminiscent the people that discovered it thought it was so reminiscent of the railway lines at London railway stations because these tracks are diverging from each other, intersecting each other, going over each other exactly like you would see in a modern day building site you can see the scale of this Clapham Junction area and you can also see that it sits next to these ancient foundations because they quarried the material and used the quarried material to build new structures and new buildings Again you can see the state of this area but it looks exactly like a building site looks like. I've worked in building sites myself and the ground becomes a state. It becomes a muddied mess with the most recent heavy vehicle that had moved over it leaving a deep track in its place. Now this is Gozo Island also in Malta and we see the same tracks. We see that they are not at a uniform depth but in almost every case they're at a uniform width. The, the, the axle uh, width of the vehicle has remained consistent which again seems fairly difficult to imagine in, in the, these prehistoric times unless there was a greater level of technology than we are told. And we can see here, uh, this vast area, if, if mainstream sources are expecting us to believe for a second that every single merchant ran within this exact same channel, they, they, they're taking a mick, that is not the case in the slightest. Now like I said, these tracks are often found in the vicinity of these ancient temples and geologists have dated the limestone of these tracks so the limestone that these tracks are formed in in Malta as far back as the Oligocene period which is some 25 to 35 million years ago now this is Humilla in Spain and I like this one because it's extremely obvious that this has been some flowing material but again there is these carved cave cities these cave dwellings carved into the rock themselves Humilla Spain again and we get evidence of the same blocks, the same quarried material at the side. You can see how the vehicle here, it looks like it's actually done, done a skid. 
it has slipped in the, the, the soft muddy material and it's instead of it going straight along here it's, it's done sort of skid and slipped. Again, which would only be possible in a soft material. Looking here, you, it becomes quite obvious that this was this was a soft and, and easily manipulated material. Some flow. Again here, you get a good idea of the depth of these tracks. This is still Humilla in Spain. And another area where it has went right through the, the, the edge of these tracks have steep sides. Just a couple more. There's a good one coming up. This one. You can clearly see that this, there is no chance in hell that they have carved this out of hard rock. This has been a heavy vehicle laden with these quarried blocks that has sunk right into the, the, the side of this slope. And there is actually some of the blocks that they quarried still there. Some of these vast blocks that were made and formed out of this mud flow that were then hardened into what we call rocks. And if this image doesn't make it extremely obvious that that was the case, then I do not know what will. You can see how they have been taken out and removed in sections, but if we zoom in we see the exact same tool marks that we've seen in Eski Kernren and Chufit Kale. Almost identical. Which would be hard to recreate if you were carving these out into a rock, you would expect to chip or crack the rock away, no score them like this with parallel lines one after another after another. And here, just look at the, right, the, the the angles on here, and this steep slope. It's because they worked for the top of the mud flow dune, taking block after block after block after block away. These same blocks that were able to be formed in any shape. I mean, look at that. That is very clearly the result of a flow. That has been a, a moving sort of semi-liquid material that has hardened in this state. Still Humilla, Spain, and we can see even more evidence of this ancient quarrying technique. This explains, the material being soft explains a, v a vast number of irregularities. This time we've jumped to Turkey. So how many different places have we been so far and we have seen the exact same tracks, the exact same almost identical sites with the same evidence of quarrying, the same cave dwellings, but this time we're in Turkey. Kayseri in Turkey. And you can see the number of tracks here. They have not sunk quite as deep, which tells me that this this uh, material was hardening slightly. It was not as soft as the material in previous places. But you can see there is track after track after track in this area. Kayseri in Turkey. Now, these tracks in Turkey exist in... Pl Two, place, two main places, it's the Figreen Valley and Cappadocia. We will look at both areas. But again, the intersect fault lines that you can see here. And these fault lines have been dated as far back as 12 to 14 million years ago. Again, suggesting that these tracks existed prior to these cracks forming. The tracks in Turkey exist in clusters over, they're spread, of, like I said, over a vast area. The shortest of these tracks measures just tens of metres and the largest and longest of them stretching for over 5 kilometres in length. Now you can imagine that if this material was soft and these were created by vehicles moving over it, they, they would not be consistent. Some of them, some of the tracks would be more apparent than others and as it moved over ground it was a different densities, different hardnesses, it would create different depths of tracks. But at the edge of this, again, we can see evidence of these blocks, evidence of these, this, this quarrying technique that had been used. How other, what other geological process would explain all this debris to the site? It's the remains of the ancient structures that they created out of these blocks. This is a good one here, because you can tell yourself when you, if you were to press your finger into some play-doh or mud or even sand, you, your finger or whatever's pressing into that soft material displaces the, the material itself and you can see it's created this lip at the edge of the track here as it's displaced this material. Again, that is only possible if the material itself was soft. Nobody's going to the effort of carving that into, into a hard rock. 
You can see the ridge here formed. This ridge was formed by that very same displaced material. As two tracks have, have, have came close to each other, they have pressed this material into this hard ridge. Like this. Now there are many, like I say, there's many mainstream theories. They range from ancient railroads to the main one being these, these repeated wearing through cart tracks, which is extremely unbelievable to me. Made all the more unbelievable by the fact that we, again, this is Turkey, and we are seeing the same evidence of quarrying. They very clearly were, were carving this and removing these blocks. The tracks themselves being nothing more than the, the, the trails left behind the, the vehicles that took these blocks away, that transported them to or from the building sites. Now this is, so this is Misragar El Kibir. This is the very same Clapham Junction that we spoke about previously. You can see the depth of some of these tracks at this Clapham Junction are absolutely vast. And that looks like an aerial photograph of a modern day building site. And you can see this 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 curve here. If you can imagine creating that any other way other than a material uh, a vehicle moving through soft mud, then I would like to hear it, because the 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 curves in these road, to me, seem extremely hard to create in any other fashion. The same area in Malta, just to add a wee bit of credence to my theory that the the sea level has risen, and that is these tracks going straight into the water themselves. I believe in some cases the water was used to keep this material soft whilst it was being worked. And again, you can see what looks like a material that has flowed. If I told you this was soft mud, you would believe me. It is in fact hard rock. Again, more evidence of this material being pressed out as these, these vehicles move through. And again, you can see the depth is not consistent at all. This is the deeper section here, this is a shallow section, another deep section. And that is purely because the, the certain areas of this had hardened quicker than others. What is interesting when we look here is we also see evidence of footprints. That looks exactly like a footprint in the soft dirt. Now this would have been created by the, the, the workers that were working at these quarries. I don't know how anybody can look at that and say it does not look like vehicle tracks in soft mud, soft material. This is the same Vigrain Valley that I spoke about in Turkey. And like I said, the rock, the limestone that these tracks are formed in, has been dated by geologists to 12 to 14 million years ago. That is the Miocene period. But we also see evidence of quarrying. The same sort of cave looking dwellings. And I think if you, you look at this, you can make up your own mind, that looks exactly like clay. Give it enough time or the right conditions, this would harden into what we call rock. This entire object has been at one point soft and clay like. And it's extremely coincidental that in all of these areas they have these same cave dwellings. If I told you this was at Eski Karmen in Russia you would again believe me because it looks identical. And in the background you can see even more of these dwellings. They were used by the quarry workers. Some of them would have been used for storage, tool storage, some of them would have been homes and dwellings and some of them would have been places of worship. And what we see when this, this rock is split, so this to us looks like a rock and to modern geologists they would call it limestone. Bear in mind limestone is, is almost, a, almost analogous with cement, but when this rock cracks it looks like clay, it looks like soft material inside, it looks less like rock and more like a clay like substance that has hardened. Dating these, I think, is, is a lot harder. Was this a more recent occurrence or was this, again, did this actually happen 12 to 14 million years ago? I don't think so. I think it happened, as we all know, the, 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 the flood was in the thousands of years. Vigrin Valley in Turkey again, and we see these same score marks that we have seen in, in other continents, completely different continents. Now, I can't imagine any other way that these score marks would have been created other than by the axles or... The, there's something dangling off these vehicles as it moved through soft soft mud. How else would it have scored these the entire way through? You can't you couldn't have scored these like this with this perfectly straight line, parallel line after parallel line after parallel line, if this was a hard material like rock. And again the displaced material in the middle of these tracks, right next to the 
tracks himself in these va- these scores, these scars into the, the rock itself which explaining it via any other method than the material being soft is, is unbelievable to me Green Valley again still but we see this lip this is another good for you this lip that runs the length of this track that is the exact same sort of lip you would get if you pressed your finger or any other object into a soft material it would displace the material itself and create furrows or, or ridges along the side of, of the valley that you, you had pressed you can almost make it the scoring on the side here it's just, just more worn, just more weathered In both sections here, it is. Uh, I mean, this is one of the most obvious. How how mainstream uh, historians or geologists can claim this was anything other than soft material at one point is beyond me. Nobody has went to the effort of covering these these deep valleys, or or tracks running through these uh, carts running through these tracks to 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 wear the rock. Would not explain how this this ridge was formed along the edge at either side. And you can see how it's smooth where the, the wheels of these vehicles have ran and then becomes rough where they have ended. And in the Five Green Valley again we see evidence of quarrying. There is section after section after section scored in parallel lines with tracks leading away from it because this is where they cut the blocks. They not only moved into the mud flows but they used the mud flows themselves to, to create building materials for civilizations. As you can see here, this is so obviously the, the, the footprint of a block and another and another and another with tracks leading right away for the cutting flow. Another look at these uh, score marks. And you can imagine how this was created. If, if this entire area was mud and you were driving along here in a 4x4 the axle of your vehicle, the hub, eh, the wheel, if, if it rubbed along the soft side as you went along it would create these gouges. I believe that is almost exactly how this was created here. And you can see by the smoothness of this rock and how it, it looks like a flow, it looks like a mud flow that has hardened. Still in the Figuring Valley, it's just a, a, another look at these, uh, hundreds of them, by the way, these areas where they have cut the blocks. And you can see here where they have cut one, two, three, four, five. They've cut block after block after block. And in every case, there is tracks leading away for them. More stairs. Again, these stairs would have been extremely easy to create if you just took a long, flat piece of material such as wood and pressed it into the clay, pressed it into the mud. But what I find interesting here is another case where the rock has split. And tell me that doesn't look like clay on the inside. It almost looks like I could go and take my finger and take a gouge at it. Another look at these areas, which mainstream mainstream historians do not have any answer for whatsoever. The answers they do give us are extremely unsatisfactory. It is it is obvious to anybody with four and a half brain cells that that was not created by carving rock. How can you carve rock in such a fashion that it would leave? a 3 metre long perfectly straight line and not only that but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 running parallel to each other you can see the length of it here this was created by a vehicle running along this uh, the soft material and scraping it as it went by back to Spain, this is Cecil Beach and we see the exact same tracks Extremely coincidental that these people that were separated by distance and time have almost the exact same uh, looking tracks, the exact same looking cave dwellings. This is Malta again, St George Bay. St Paul's Bay in Malta. How we are expected to believe that the same merchants ran the same tra- uh, the, the, the same sized carts at the same same area time after time after time again to wear limestone and rock to that depth that uniformly is beyond me it is that that is an impossibility and the same here St Paul's Bay in Malta this time there is just a uh, wild uh, grass grown in the, the middle of these tracks 
See me there again. There is not a shadowy doubt in my mind that these this this material was soft at the time these cracks were created. This is Tierms in Spain. We see not only these vast tracks, but also more evidence of quarrying. The hills in the background are nothing more than unquarried mud flow. They've quarried the hell out of this, that's why it looks like this. They didn't quite reach this one and this one and this one in time before it hardened. But are we to believe for one second that they carved this out of hard rock? Nah. Of course we're not. Another look, look at the angles here, but look at how smooth it is. And again, massive tracks, which cart wheels would not create, wagon wheels would not create, whether they were bound by iron or no. But here we see what looks like digger tracks, like track, the, 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 the markings from tracks as opposed to wheels. Even more, terms in Spain still, and this area again looks eerily reminiscent of mud flow, but we have these areas, so this they have extremely, extremely uh, sharp sides, straight edges, we see the same evidence of tooling that we've seen in SK Carmen and elsewhere, but to imagine for a second they carved this pit out, out, out of limestone and hard rock is, is impossible. And again, the same, the same tool marks, the exact same tool marks that we've seen in Esky Kermain. Did every civilization follow the exact same building techniques? No, they just had the same building materials. And you can see again, they've created these underground dwellings, these cave dwellings, because the workers needed somewhere to live. They, they, they didn't have the luxury of uh, uh, Volkswagens or uh, Mercedes, so they had to live where they worked. Again, some more stairs, just a bit more obvious this time that this was uh, created out of some, some form of soft material. And we, didn't get look, we, we don't get to look at what's inside these because they're bricked off. Just like in Malta, many of these ancient megalithic sites in Malta, photography is actually banned for some reason. They come up with the, the, the most obscure reasons, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's 2021. And they are trying to tell us that we are not allowed to take photos inside these these prehistoric sites. TMs again, with a few uh, a, a few remnants of these ancient blocks that they created. And this is just a modern day off road track. A four by four has created these impressions that we see. It looks almost identical to what we have spent the last thirty five minutes looking at. If you can imagine weathering and time taking it, so imagine for a second I click my fingers and Medusa and I turn this into rock. You then I had a couple of hundred years of weathering and it looks identical to these very same tracks that we've seen everywhere. You stick these tracks on the side of a quarry and we have these ancient stone tracks that mainstream historians try and tell us was created by wagon wheels. So anyway guys that was that was uh, just Part, part one of this video really, it's a, a, a pretty in-depth topic, there is a lot attached to it, but I believe that this is good evidence that they, that not only off a mud flow, the same mud flow that we talk about in every other video, mud flood and everything else, but also the, the, the ancient cataclysmic flood that created the mud flow in the first place, and as a result we have a lot to talk about, these tracks are just the, the, the first step on that path. In the next video I want to talk about these cave cities themselves in a lot more detail and from the perspective of them being carved out of soft rock. Not only that, I want to talk about a lot of ancient sites and how they would be a lot more easy to explain if they were not built with hard stone but instead with a soft clay like material that was then allowed to harden. Anyway guys, I hope you find this interesting. Until the next one, peace.